<laughs> uh, I appreciate the worship. That's so good. Uh, it's wonderful to be together again. We're going to move into a short time of um, a, a bit of a just the question, what do you feel or what do you sense or if you have sensed something during our short um, worship this morning so far in song, uh, perhaps just a thought from the Father. Uh, I'd like to just open up our, our morning uh, just for a few moments if you felt moved or carried by the Lord or you had you felt that there, there was a, a something, a thought, a burning thought from the Holy Spirit in your thoughts and your in your in your morning time where you just felt I, I'd, I'd like to share this just briefly. And that might just be a thought or a verse of scripture that the Holy Spirit had impressed upon you. Um, and what we want to do, and it may not, you may not be comfortable with that, and that's okay. Um, we're going to give this a try uh, for, for, for this in this format and context. But our heart and our goal and our desire is to um, remind ourselves that the Holy Spirit does speak to us in our inner person. And that we want, as we speak, uh, to share the simplicity of what the, we believe the Father might be saying, not to give commentary to it, just the thought, and then listen for the resonance in others as they perhaps may share that thought. And then I'll move into um, a brief uh, sharing uh, from the scriptures uh, before we move into a time of uh, corporate uh, partaking of the Lord's table together. So, um, Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would um, just encourage us that we do hear your voice and you love to speak to us. And so, Holy Spirit, we just ask that you would um, just confirm your word among us. Lord, it said when they gathered, you know, they had a psalm, a hymn, or a spiritual song and that it, it mutually edifies together as one. And Father, I ask for a release of that among us here in this moment, in Jesus' name. So if anyone, does anyone feel, um, and Ed, I don't know how you want to do this, if you want to, um, you know, maybe, maybe just a raised hand or something. Does anybody have uh, just an impression from the Holy Spirit that you might have, or a thought that... Um, you're willing to share without commentary. Just this is what I, I believe I heard the Father say uh, during, uh, and it could be during our our few days, but specifically more this morning in our time. So, and I'll leave that open for a few moments. If nobody has anything, uh, then that's okay too. Uh, you don't. Ha we don't want you to try to find something or come up with it. We want it to be more spontaneous and what you felt uh, impressed by the Holy Spirit in your heart. So uh, what I was hearing was peace that the Lord is releasing in shalom very powerfully on people. And it's going to be a resting and not just a transitory peace, but something that's going to go deep. Hmm. Wonderful. Um, I get the sense that uh, I'm not done with you yet. Mm. That's beautiful. Thank you. Mm. Every morning at 5 a.m., I deliver essential workers with my bus. I have two groups that I do, and we usually just play non-Christian music. One group plays their own music because they're from Mexico. With my second group, though, I, I heard this nudging, put on praise and worship, right? And so I did just before I picked them up. It's a group of 10 people. Most of them are from the Ukraine, and I played it from the time I, just before I picked them up until I got back home again. Thank you. Hmm. I, I don't know exactly 
how to say this, but I feel like this weekend I've I've just made a huge step towards um, being able to forgive in a way that I haven't for a long time, and I, I'm I, I don't I can't say it's been one verse um, or one speaker or the worship time or being prayed for last night. Um, but the Lord has shown me uh, to a greater extent my own sinfulness and um, and his forgiveness and how if he's forgiven me, he will also forgive others and and he will give me the ability to forgive mm. in in through that. And so I'm just very thankful for that because I know, that is a huge block in my relationship with the Lord. And I feel like that has uh, a, a, just a ray of light. Mm. So I, I praise the Lord for that. Wow, that's wonderful. Beautiful. Thank you, Bev. Earlier this morning and during the singing, I heard God say, I love you. And it's not, I mean, not just me, it's all of us. That wonderful love. Thank you, Lord. Beautiful. Beautiful. Hmm. I sense that there's a fresh impartation uh, as you've spoken about peace, Steve, and others, and uh, it's been prominent in the prayer times. Uh, Jesus sent out 70 others, uh, it says in, in Luke 10. And they were to speak peace. And it was almost like this impartation of release through them to others. And uh, I have a sense that that's something he's calling each of us to do, to be people that speak life and encouragement and even to impart his peace. Amen. Mm, thank you, John. Hmm. It, it was interesting this morning in the devotional looking at Psalm 4 and particularly verse 8 where David talks about uh, sleeping and being still and, and peace and just thinking about the times when David was on the run and still he, he had that sense of peace and rest and knowing that God's hand was on him. So I think it really speaks to there is a sense of peace and rest we have as we come together for a weekend like this, but it also speaks to going on from here and we're, we're a little bit more disconnected and the importance of carving out that time to seek the Lord and know his peace and rest. Hmm. Thank you, Steve. Waiting in silence for someone to be moved to share is, uh, we learned in our church in hope, is, uh, is not an awkward place to be. Sometimes in church that silence is awkward, but we never want silence to be awkward when we're listening for the voice of the Father. So. Hmm. Anyone else? Can I tell you a quick little story? Uh, we were uh, in our church in Hope, and um, after our morning worship, uh, the Holy Spirit said to me during the worship, uh, someone here has a word, and you're not allowed to preach until they give the word. <laughs> so I said that to everyone. I, I sat on my stool, and I said, someone here has a word, and I'm not allowed to preach until you give the word. Uh, so we'll just wait. And we waited. 
and we waited and waited and waited. Um, a minute can feel like an eternity. Five minutes is excruciating. Six minutes, seven minutes of silence, just waiting. And uh, someone finally said, oh, I just knew it. I just knew it. I didn't want to come to church today because I felt God spoke to me and I didn't know what he meant by it. And I didn't want to do it. And I didn't want to say it. And, and she was arguing to herself in, in the service that she did. I said, just spit out the word. And she says, I, but I don't know what it means. And then she just blurted it out. And this was the word she said, I am the source of your supply. And I knew immediately the word was for me. And it hit me like a, like an arrow from God's quiver. I am the source of your supply. And the, and the father said, okay, now you can preach. <laughs> I don't remember what I preached, but I remember the word of the Lord to, to us in that moment. And it was something powerful. And so, so I don't know if there's anybody like that. I'm, I'm not waiting for a word. Uh, the Lord didn't tell me I can't preach until someone shares, but I, I just want to affirm in us all that he is the God who speaks and he is Abba and loves to talk with his children. He just loves that. And I just want to encourage that in us uh, in this time that one of the great truths of the kingdom is uh, the ability to walk and talk and be present with Jesus and hear his voice. So I just want to encourage you with that. Anyone else? Okay. Now, when we, as we move through our morning here, um, if you find that, you know, oh, I did have a word and, and it's confirming or just a thought and uh, I, did, I, want, I should have given it and I didn't, you know, we can always address that after in our prayer times and whatnot. So I just want to encourage you in that. So um, a couple of things that I heard um, this morning, um, are just wonderful. I, I, I really value the voice of God together. And as we prepare our hearts to celebrate um, the Lord's table, the glory of God is that he is present with us and that he loves to talk with us and walk with us. Um, when uh, I was in my uh, morning devotion this morning, and forgive me for uh, not being in the, the morning devotions with you, Ed, and, and the team this morning and the, the other mornings, but I, I have a set time um, that I have with the Father uh, every day. Uh, and I'll share a little bit about why that is true in my life and that I, I, it's a real sacred moment in time for me and something that, that I need every day. Um, and uh, so as much as, as it's possible for me to do that, I do that. But in, in my time with the Lord this morning, um, well, I'm, I'm just going to, before I move into that, I just want to share this because I in, I, in my morning time, I did look at Psalm 4 and uh, the, the verse that struck or the, the phrase that struck me most in Psalm 4, and I don't know what you talked about in Psalm 4, but, but this was the phrase that struck me. He says, I found more joy in my heart with being with you, Father, more joy in my heart than the abundance of grain or wine. And I thought, wow, that's powerful. Because the, the Bible says that the, in Romans that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And here David is writing, when I'm with you, I have more joy than the abundance of grain or wine. And it reminded me of something, and I wrote it here, of E. Stanley Jones' salvation experiences. Because as we approach the table of the Lord, we approach it from the posture of, I found more joy in you than grain or wine. 
And I may practice the tradition of the cup and, and the bread, the broken bread, and value that deeply. But when I'm, I'm not even cognizant or in that uh, moment taking the cup and the wine, I find more joy in you every day. Listen to Jones and his, his experience with the Lord. This is, this is his, how he came to Christ. I, I'm just, just briefly um, from one of his writings, he said, uh, I, when, when, I, when I knew I was saved, he listen to how he writes it. I grabbed the man next to me by the shoulder and said, I've got it. I've got it. What did I mean? I see now that it was not an it. It was a him. I had him, Jesus, and he had me. We had each other. I belonged. My estrangement, my sense of orphanage were gone. I was reconciled. As I rose from my knees, I felt I wanted to put my arms around the world and share with everyone. Little did I dream at that moment that I would spend the rest of my life literally trying to put my arms around the world to share this with everybody. But I have. This was a seed moment. The whole of my future was packed into it. Crude? No, creative. Emotional? It took an emotional upheaval to carry me across from a self-preoccupied life to a Christ-preoccupied life. The center of being was changed from self to Savior. I didn't try to act of will to give up my sins. They were gone. I looked into his face and was forever spoiled for anything that was unlike him. I looked into his face. It wasn't that I tried to get rid of my sin. It was gone. I looked on his face, oh, and I was forever spoiled for anything that was unlike him. To Jones, the kingdom was Jesus, and Jesus was the kingdom, and Jesus was God. And he was spoiled. I, I want to continually be spoiled from face-to-face -face encounters with him, from hearing his voice. I want, people say this with COVID, oh, church, we don't want church to be the same. Church can't be the same anymore. I'm going, I want to be spoiled every time I meet with him. I want to be spoiled every time I gather with his children. I want to be spoiled for anything else. Um, so in my morning time, and I just bless you with that. Um, in, in this morning time, I ask the Father, what, what's, what's on your heart? That's how I start my, you know, what, what is on your heart? And, and I heard this, um, and I wrote it this way. And I, I didn't, I, and, and it, was, it was more of an answer and a thought. And, and, and I just want to encourage you that sometimes when you're, when you're journaling or you're asking the father what he wants to share with you or what's on his heart, um, it doesn't have to sound just like him, thus saith the Lord, or a booming voice. It was, this is how it happened for me this morning. It was very, very simple. And I needed simple. He said, I, I wrote it this way. Oh, I'm feeling that. You want me to be with you, Jesus. That's on your heart. Not how I do communion or you, you, want, you want me to be with you. Oh, and I just sat in that for a moment. I want to be with you, Jesus. But you want, to, you want me to be with you. That was so much like it. I, I got carried by that. It, it moved me. I was, I got, I got on, I, I became undone. And then he started to, to speak to me. And as you find yourself in the scriptures and in the word, you'll find that when he, you hear his still small voice, some of those scriptures will come up and bear witness to that. That's the most amazing experience. I, I heard him say in Hebrews, um, it says, uh, 
that the father wanted the son to sit at his right hand. It says in Hebrews, who did God ask? He didn't ask angels. Yeah. Who did he ask other than Jesus? Come and sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The father wanted Jesus to be with him. It says um, he wants us to sit as his, at his right hand. It says that when we become born again, we are seated in heavenly places with him. Sometimes I, I don't, I, I need to remind myself that, oh, you, you, you want me to be with you. And I'm, I'm seated with you. You know how Jesus said this? He said, behold, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. And sometimes we push that off to an end time. But the grand thought of God, the grand thought of the kingdom coming, the grand thought of thy will be done, thy kingdom come, thy will be done is, I want you with me. I want you with me in this. And that's what Jones found. He says, when that, when that came upon me, I, I was his. And I realized, and Jones said it this way, and this is the only way I can say it. He wants me to be with him in the world, doing the things that he wants done. Um, I, uh, when we were in Hope and we church planted in Hope back in 1991, and we had a, a very strong uh, ecumenical fellowship of, of churches. We, we were a small town of 10, 12,000 people. And, and um, you can't live in a small town and try to see the kingdom happen if you don't love all the bride, every expression of the bride. And it was the grace of God that allowed us to just you know, it was like Jesus is going, I love this church. I love this one. These are all, it's all me. It's all the kingdom. And we, we had this love among us, that, quite amazing. And one year we, we, um, we booked, we would every September uh, during one of our, uh, the town had a festival every year. It was called Brigade Days. And uh, we would have a joint interchurch service together. And this year, we, that particular year that I'm going to share about, we, we took over the uh, ice arena. There wasn't any ice in it. And so we could have this grand gathering together. And we had a worship choir. And we invited that year, we invited Paul Henderson, the Toronto Maple Leaf hockey player that scored the team goal in 1976 for Canada win over Russia. And he was our main speaker. And the place was packed. And... Um, uh, while we're there, um, there was a, a, a family that lived on Vancouver Island, and he, home, they, he and his wife homeschooled their children. And the prize, he was also, he had a small plane, and the prize for which of his kids, their, their children um, scored the highest on their exams at the year end, were allowed to choose any location to go to, um, and he would fly them there. And his daughter picked Hope. So they flew into our little airport in Hope. And it was a Sunday. They flew in a Saturday night. They were in their hotel room having a great time. And Sunday morning, they thought, we want to go fellowship with the church, with churches. So they came to the church, and they realized every church was empty. <laughs> it's like, what's going on? And they found that on the signs of the churches, oh, we're all meeting over at the, at the ice rink. So they made their way over to the ice rink. And he got there. And uh, at the end of the service, uh, he and his daughter approached me. Um, and I, was, we, I wasn't up at the front. We were, they just approached me and they said, um, and, he, and he was, he was kind of stumbling over things. And he says, can I, can I just share with you a, a word? Like it's, it's a prophetic word. Are you okay with that? Because he didn't know who I was. And of all the leaders in town, I probably am the most, yeah, give me the prophetic word. <laughs> so he said, um, this is what I sense the Holy Spirit is saying to you. The amount of time you spend face to face before the Lord, that will determine the fruit of your ministry. 
the proportion that you spend before the Lord will determine the fruit that you and proportion that you have of the fruit of your ministry. So the more time you spend, the greater fruit. I went, oh, that's that resonates with my heart, that that sounds like my father saying, I want you to spend time with me. And what it did, and then we spent that day together, and he took us up in his plane and flew us around, and, and then they left. It impacted me. Not, it wasn't something I didn't know, it was, but it was quickened to me by the Holy Spirit through a brave individual who heard a thought from God and was brave enough to tell me. And I just want to encourage you, sometimes you'll hear a thought and you'll, you'll just, I, and you'll, the Lord may even direct you to who it should be given to. And when you give it to them in humility, trusting that, yeah, this sounds like my father and it's a word of encouragement to turn to him and look more. And prophecy does that. It, it turns someone into the face of Christ. Um, and I, and I came away with a scripture that has become in a way, a life verse for me that I want to share before we move into, into communion. Um, and it's in Mark chapter three, if you have your Bibles, if not, I'll just read it to you. And Mark chapter three, starting, excuse me. I like your glasses, John. <laughs> uh, verse 13. And he, Jesus, went up on the mountain and called, in the ESV I'm reading, and called to him those whom he desired, and they came to him. And he appointed the twelve, whom he also named apostles, so that they might be with him, and he might send them out to preach, and have authority to cast out demons. And in I, my Bible, I have circled a few words, and I have written in my Bible three words. The words that I've circled in this passage that have deep meaning to me was, he called to himself. It goes back to my word this morning that I, I said, what's on your heart? And he says, oh, I said, Jesus, you, you want me to be with you. He called to him whom he desired. And I just want to say he, he desires you. He's calling you. There's a, there's a sound of his voice that's saying, come, spend time with me. That's what Jones found. He said, the kingdom was Jesus. I, I had him and he had me. Whom he desired. And he appointed the twelve. And then I circled this so that they might be with him and he might send them out to preach and cast out demons. And so I've written in my Bible these three words. And it goes along with the word that my friend gave to me that visited our town spontaneously or plan planned by the Father to remind me that my time spent with him will determine the fruit. I wrote this, communion with the Father comes before commission. Communion before commission. He wanted the disciples, like he had a great plan for the disciples and he had things he wanted the disciples to do. But it says this, he called to himself those he desired and you can't come into the kingdom unless he desires you and has invited you in. It's a, it's a gift of God. It's not, it's not you were seeking God. It was God desired you and intervened in your life, interrupted your life, and put in you the revelation that he wants you, and you responded to that. The gift of God. And you became a son or a daughter. He, he calls to himself those he wants to be with him. And it says this, that they might be with him. 
And I thought about and pondered that and I thought, oh, Jesus, your presence is more important than the work that I do. Because you want me to get to know you, what you're like, how you think, how you act. For me, that's the kingdom. That was the kingdom for Jones, too. He said, the kingdom is Jesus. You can't separate the two. That as I found Christ, I found the kingdom. As I learned his ways, I, I saw the ways of the kingdom. I saw his heart for the world. And I want, as Jones, in his words, he says, I wanted to put my arms around the world. And you go, well, that's, you know, we sing, you remember we used to sing that song? He's got the whole world in his hands. Like Jones actually experienced that same heart of the Father through Jesus. Communion before commission. And as we get ready to um, partake in the, in the cup and the bread, what I realized with the life of Christ and, and for me is that the way that I steward my relationship with him and, and that I value being with him and knowing that he wants me to be with him, that that brings delight in him, that when I become part of the corporate family, as Jones would say, our father, that we are, we are not on this in this by ourselves. We realize that there's a, the same sound we hear in others as we corporately gather. And it becomes this anthem of, of praise and glory to God that when we gather, we realize, ah, oh, you know him too. He has moved you. He has seized you. You have him and he has you. And when you partake in that cup, you're, for me, when I do it, I go, oh, you did this because you wanted me to be with you. You went to the cross because you wanted me to be with you. You were calling me to yourself, and the only way I could get to you without my sin being in the way was you went to the cross for me. That I could be in you, and you could be in me, and I could have that. And then as I turn and I look, you did this for others, and together we are your body in the earth. But it first comes with that, 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 that revelation and that light of you did this for me because you wanted me to be with you. And as I spend time with you, I learn about you and I, I, I absorb your thoughts and your ways. And when I gather together, it just magnifies and glorifies. It's like a soloist singing and then a choir singing. Oh, I, I get moved by choirs. Um, it's that, 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 that the harmony of all the parts put together. Communion before commission. Um, uh, Mark, uh, are you there? Do you have the verse of scripture that we can read out of the book of Acts? Um, there's something about this. Because as we approach communion, it's, it's communion before commission. And, and as we partake of the cup and the bread, we're going to talk a little bit about that. But there's a common, and I, I would always say it this way, communion to me is a, we have a common union in our, uh, in, our, in our fellowship with, with Christ. I am one with Christ, you are one with Christ. We have a common union and it's not the mandate of the kingdom is our commonness. It's he has me, I have him and therefore. Uh, so Mark, are, are you there with the scripture for us? Hi. Yeah, so uh, Acts 2, 42. Uh, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes, ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. And the Lord blessed the reading of his word. There's a verse of scripture. Thank you, Mark. There's a verse of scripture here in that passage. 
in verse 46, and it says, in, in my translation, and day by day, attending the temple together, and then listen to this, and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts. We're, we're going to partake today together uh, corporately. And as most and many church practices are, you take partake of the Lord's table, the Eucharist, the Lord's Supper uh, in the uh, context of the local church. Here it says, they also took it together in their homes. And I want to encourage you, even during COVID and as churches are starting to regather again and whatnot, you can, you can partake of communion with your family, um, with you before the Lord, with your friends that you have over for dinner. And, and the beauty of it was this verse that struck me. And we have a, we have a, um, a, um, a big, huge wall plaque that, that my wife and I picked out at Hobby Lobby when we were down in the States. And uh, it says that they broke bread together in their homes and then it says it this way with the scriptures, with glad and sincere hearts. I just love that word sincere, um, that there's a sincerity that comes from being his. Um, there's a common union we have in communion, glad and sincere hearts. So, so as we um, prepare to take the, the, the cup and the bread in, in the way that our, my practice is, we, we, we gather with the cup and the bread, and then we read from the scriptures. So I don't know, did anyone, everyone prepare to take communion this morning? So, if not, maybe just take a moment to get um, a cup and a piece and some bread. Does anyone need a moment to do that? So, so what we were going to do is we were going to sing Amazing Grace while people that haven't got their bread and, and wine or juice ready. Is that okay? We'll get Mark to... to wonderful. That would be absolutely wonderful. Thank you, Janice. So, uh, I'm not muted. The hour I first believed 10,000 years When we've been there 10,000 years right shining as the sun we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first began Thank you, Mark. When we began our time, uh, we asked the Holy Spirit to speak to us. And let me remind you of some of the things that were said and spoken. The sense of great peace that God is releasing his shalom among us. Now listen to how these words when the father says, oh, I want you to be with me. I love it. I love having you with me. And that your time spent with me will fuel the ministry and the life that you uh, release in the community. Listen to the sound of the father's voice. There's a, I'm releasing my shalom in you and to you. And I'm not done with you yet. There's more I want to take. It was almost like the father saying, I'm not done with you yet. There's more I want to tell you. Spend time with me. Um, and this one said, um, I felt led to uh, play worship in the car. Worship is that sound of drawing our, our, uh, our hearts in, into union with Christ. It's powerful. I step towards forgiveness. I'm feeling more unbound from being in, in community and in the presence of the Lord. 
the father said, I love you. He said, I have a fresh impartation for you today. You'll sense my peace and um, just in, in, our, in, in being together, carve out time to seek me. Those are some of the things that we said among us. So as we partake of the cup and the, and the bread, in my practice, we, we hold the bread and just take it. Um, we're not focusing on our, on, on the how. We're, we're leaning into the why we do this. And uh, there are many different practices of communion. Some where you go to the front, some where you, you pick up your emblems and bring them back to your seat. And some where they're, they're administered to you by uh, the clergy. Um, and, and none of them are wrong, and none of them are the only way. We, we never want the religion of our practice to get in, in the way of the meeting of our human heart with the living God. You're reminded of the time when David and his men went through and ate the grain off the table of showbread, and the, the, everyone got upset, and they said, this is what we do, or the disciples eating grain on the Sabbath. And Jesus reminded them, it, you know, why we do things is more important than how we do things. What is the motive of our heart before the Lord? And so whatever practice you're from, bear with me in mind. We are holding the bread and I'm holding the bread. And Paul said this in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, what I've received from the Lord, I want to pass on to you. On the night that he was betrayed, Imagine that, that Jesus, even when he was being betrayed, why he was doing what he was doing was so important. He broke bread. He took bread and he broke it and he gave thanks. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So when we're holding this bread, we're, we're affirming our union with Christ through the work on the cross, his death, his burial, his resurrection. We're affirming our union. And we talked about that yesterday, that God, Abba, our Father, wants our lives to be an extension of his, in union with him, one. And it's made possible through the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And so when we partake of this, we're, we're, we're of the bread and the cup, we're saying, I am in communion with you, Father. And we're, we're saying this is the kingdom embodied in us. So Father, we thank you for your broken body and your blood shed for us. And we bless this bread and we do it in remembrance of you as we partake now in Jesus name you're free to partake of the bread mm. Mm. just let him speak to your heart and affirm let him affirm to you your sonship and your daughterhood and as family. Hmm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Abba. Thank you that you're the word made flesh. You dwelt among us so that we would see your glory and the glory of your Father. And you would, you would choose the cross because you chose us before the foundation of the world that we might enter into fellowship with you and want and union with you. Thank you. And it says in the same manner, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant, the new relationship, the new testimony in my blood. 
do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So, Father, we thank you for the cup. We thank you for your blood. Now, blood is DNA. When they, when they, someone passes away or they take a blood sample, they can tell by DNA what your family lineage is. And by the blood shed on the cross for us, we inherit by faith the DNA of Jesus and the DNA of the Father. And, and when we get squeezed or we get cut and our blood is exposed, they go, oh, they're of Christ <laughs> because of the cross. So Lord, impart to us that reality more. Let your peace permeate us that when we are squeezed or cut or broken, you come out. You are made more evident in us. We thank you for your finished work and we take this cup saying we are in union with you. We carry your DNA because of your finished work on the cross. In Jesus' name, we partake of the cup. Hmm. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> hmm. I love you, Jesus. Hmm. I pray over us all that we would have also receive a fresh impartation of the Father's heart, that he is Abba. And as Rod's children call him Abba, that we would continually call our Heavenly Father Abba. Abba, our Father, loves to have us with him. I, I, one, one more thing I'd like to do before we we finish our, our time together as uh, to share a story. When I was, Sylvie and I had the honor and the privilege a number of years ago to travel to Florida. Um, well, there's an Anglican bishop there in Gainesville that is a friend and they were holding a, hosting a conference in their church, healing broken churches. And on the Sunday morning of the conference, we were going to celebrate the Eucharist together. It was a wonderful time. And there were three Anglican bishops present. And they asked me to join them in the back room um, before the service. And they explained their heart and desire that uh, after they, that, that there would be some preaching of the word a worship preaching of the word, and then they were going to partake of the Eucharist in reaffirming their love for Christ and Christ's love for them and the union that they had with them. And then after communion, they were going to uh, have a bishop stand in each of the four corners of the church and anoint the people with oil, communion, commission. Eucharist, I'm one with the Father, the Father's one with me. I have communion with him. My communion with him fuels my commission to the world. And the oil of anointing was to affirm again, this isn't just for me. He's called me. As, as jo H. Stanley Jones said, I wanted to put my arms around the world. We need the anointing of the Holy Spirit to do that. And so they invited me with the three bishops and they said, well, we consider you a bishop too. I was humbled. Um, and, um, and they said, we would, we would be uh, overwhelmed with joy if you would join us and be one of the bishops in the corner to one of the four corners to anoint people. And I said, I'd love to. And they gave me a vial of oil. And I'm sat in the worship service with this vial of oil in my hand. And we were worshiping and I heard the voice of the father say this. I know you can do this, Steve. And you know, you can do this because you've been asked. But do you love the people? I said, Father, 
I don't know them. I'm just, I'm new to this group. And the, aisle, the, the, the vial of oil in my hand started to get hot. And I said, Lord, I can't just go into the corner and anoint them because it's our practice. I can't do this unless you give me a supernatural love for them. Lord, I have to say no if I don't feel love for them. And, it, and then I thought, oh, that, that, that would be embarrassing. I've, but the overwhelming heart of the father was, I can't do this. and I can't just go and do it because it's a practice and it's right and good. I need to do it because I've encountered you and you have given me your love for them, the ones I don't know. And I said, oh God, oh God, give me, your, give me love for them. Give me love for them. The, the rest, uh, the two songs of worship. All I could think was, oh God, give me a love for them. Give me a love for them. Give me a love for them. And then all of a sudden, I felt as, as, as if it was oil being poured over me. And I went, and I looked around at the congregation and I went, these aren't strangers. These are my people. I, I had this supernatural love for them and I didn't know them. And I thought this, is, this can only be the work of, of the Holy Spirit. I couldn't wait to get into the corner. I couldn't wait to pour oil on the people and bless them in the name of Jesus. I, I had the time of my life <laughs> because I had the release and the, the love, the anointing love of the Holy Spirit on me. It was the kingdom enabled in me in a way that I couldn't do for myself, that practice couldn't do for me. And so even as I was preparing for my time with, with you in the ashram, I'm going, I know a couple of people, but oh God, give me a love for them. A love begotten from you there, Abba. I want to feel that same love. And this morning, if we were together, I would bring out my oil and I would anoint you with oil and bless you and, and, uh, and affirm in you as you're being anointed with oil that the kingdom of God, it, it, your communion with the Father is absolutely critical. But from that flows your heart for the world. Whether your assignment is at Safeway or carrying papers or playing pickleball or whatever, driving the limousine, that you are the expression of the kingdom of God of Jesus in that place, and that you have been anointed to bless. I love that word this morning. I felt the Holy Spirit say, turn on the worship music. What were you doing? You were releasing the heart of God to them, and you didn't know them, but your love for the Father, you obeyed him, and, and it, it flowed. We don't know what the fruit, it says, one plants, one waters, but it's up to God to give the fruit and the increase. So I, I, I can't be present to anoint you with oil. So I want to, as one of the words this morning was, there's a fresh impartation coming. I want to pray over you that a fresh impartation of the, the Holy Spirit would engulf you and baptize you with a fresh fire of his love for people for others, that in your time with the Father, uh, you, would, you would encounter him face to face and become one in union with him. And that would fuel and that anointing would come upon you that would, would put into you a love for the people. And wherever you go, you would say, Jesus, give me a love for them. And that the anointing of the Holy Spirit would rise up within you in that moment. And you would know the Father's heart for them. So if, 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 you, if that's something you want, um, as we've learned in many of our practices, just, just put out your hands. And I, I want to pray for you. And I want to use these words um, as G, it's said of Jesus that he emptied himself, he became a servant and emptied himself. I'm asking the Holy Spirit to empty me of everything he's given me and give it to you 
and to anoint you with a supernatural impartation of his love, the fire of his love. So Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come and empty me of what you've given me and give to them a double portion of your spirit. Lord, that we would encounter you as the Prince of Peace and that we would no longer strive to evangelize or witness or that we would be an extension of you because of the love you put in our heart for the world. So Holy Spirit, I ask you to come right now and fill my friends. Fill them. Burn in them with your love. Draw them away into, into a deeper communion with you as they face you face to face as Abba. That the kingdom, you, Christ, who is the kingdom, would rise up within them with a great love beyond their experience, beyond what they believe is even capable in their own mind and heart. And a fresh impartation of that would come upon them in the name of Jesus. And you can just say it this way, Jesus, I want everything you have for me. I receive everything you have for me right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Abba. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we bless and we say, Amen, so be it. Mm. Wonderful. May the Lord bless you and keep you and turn his face upon you and bring you peace. Hmm. I bless you in Jesus' name. It's been wonderful to be with you. Mm. It's been wonderful to be with the Lord in you. So I bless you in Jesus' name. Ed, my friend.